First up is Catherick's Mimic now has more loot. After slaying the Mimic in patch 4, the loot doesn't appear to be much different, but notably there is a secret item that you can extract from this chest. Now in order to get it, you actually need to destroy the chest before it becomes a Mimic by killing it in one attack. This can be done with a fireball with a smoke powder bomb set beside it. And the secret item you get in return is none other than the Spine Shutter Amulet. This amulet grants crack resonance. When the wearer deals damage with a ranged spell attack, inflict two reverberation upon the targets. Reverberation grants a minus one penalty to strength, dexterity, constitution saving throws, and with five stacks, the target takes 1d4 thunder damage and possibly falls prone. This is probably one of the best hidden items in Baldur's Gate. I would never have thought to destroy the chest in a single hit for a special set of items to drop. So cool. Number two is added more treasure to to a diggable mound in Act 1. Well, this very vague note here in the patch led me down a journey of digging up every single diggable mound in Act 1, which included the Mountain Trail, Rosie Morn Monastery, and the Underdark. And after digging up 44 mounds of dirt, I can confidently say that this more treasure that they speak of isn't anything to write home about. The most exciting item I found was Fleet Fingers from the Mound in the Forest, but that item was already in the game. And by the way, there was one mound in the Festering Cove that was nearly impossible to dig up because after you dig the mound, the chest is actually still underground. So you have to hold Alt to see it and then actually drag it up manually to then open it. And then after all that work to get that chest, inside of it was just a garnet ring. But if you appreciate the effort, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe for more Baldur's Gate 3 content. Number three is new item artwork. The Seussur weapons received new artwork. The Seussur weapons are earned from the quest the masterwork weapon which requires you to go to the underdark and retrieve Seussur bark and use it in the forge in the blighted village to create a masterwork weapon this masterwork weapon can either be a dagger sickle or great sword each of these weapons can silence the target on hit which can be very helpful against an enemy concentrating on a spell you can see the old model didn't look very different from a normal weapon and now the new artwork has the item looking entirely different almost resembling the Seussur tree and while the weapon doesn't deal incredible damage, the silence is useful, and I've actually read online to always choose the dagger so you can throw it and silence an enemy at will throughout the game. However, after testing this, not only does throwing a Seussur weapon at an enemy not silence them, the dagger specifically disappears permanently after throwing it, so I wouldn't count on this weapon being something you hang on for the entire game, like it sounds like. Also, the Spider Liar from Minthara also has new artwork and looks more arachnid-like than before, Really nice visual updates in my opinion. Number four is a clown in town. Getting wet will remove the pixie's curse. What pixie curse? Well, in act two, when you retrieve the moon lantern from Karnis, you can use the lantern to begin a dialogue with a pixie inside. Now, most dialogue options lead to freeing the pixie, which is what I did in my first playthrough. But if you go out of your way to use the device to torture Dally the pixie, torment her, etc., and then eventually smash the lantern, she actually escapes and will still give you the fill agreed Feywild Bell, but she'll also give you the pixie curse, a clown in town, which reads, Rue the day you crossed a fey, you were cruel to Dali thrice, now you'll have to pay the price. Your character has clown makeup on permanently until you either cast Remove Curse, or now just add in patch 4, Get Wet to remove it. And number 5 is Spider Meat. Licking the hunk of spider meat in the Gauntlet of Shar might make you sick. So it seems licking the spider meat will apply a poisoned condition to your character now, but interestingly, it seems like there might have also been some dialogue added here because I actually don't recall figuring out that the meat is actually charmed with succubus spittle last time I clicked this in my first playthrough, so really glad I came back to give it another lick. All right, number six is Disrobing Blink Step. The boots of very fast blinking from Akabi now have a unique version of Misty Step with a unique name and description. So the boots of very fast blinking can be earned by losing the jackpot prize from Akabi's wheel in the Circus of the Last Days. These boots have a unique version of Misty Step called Disrobing Blink Step, which teleports you to your target location like Blink Step, but unlike Blink Step, you also leave your clothes behind from where you came from. Not 
ideal for a frontline fighter, kind of funny, but maybe you could get away with this as a spellcaster. Additionally, the bag of molding, also from Akabi, which turns anything you put into it moldy, food related, now has unique visuals. It now looks like a moldy bag, so nice updates there as well. And then number seven, we have the soap bar, one of fans' most anticipated changes. You can now use sponges and soaps to clean up your party members, removing grime, blood, and bad odors. So the trick to using soap, which you can't use when you first pick up, I believe it's a bug, is to actually stack two bars of soap together and then split the stack. Then the soap will be usable. Shout out to Reddit user Paui Dokami, who just wanted to clean their characters, but ended up having the whole camp aggro for throwing soap, but eventually figured it out for us all. All right, number eight is Suicidal Gandians. So NPCs will now give proper consideration to Steel Watcher's self-destruct area. So the Suicidal Gandians won't Misty Step directly into the self-destructing Steel Watcher anymore? Or is it that after their thoughtful consideration, they'll decide to still do it? This is actually a much needed change because I swear these Gandians have no respect for life. They truly do not want to be saved, it seems like. All right, number nine is Act 3, Summon Quasit. So you can now learn the Summon Quasit spell via the scroll of Summon Quasit found in Act 3. In the Vault of Sorceress Sundries, also known as the Basement, there is a hidden door that leads to a peculiar lamp. Inside, it is filled with treasure and a scroll of Summon Quasit. This scroll previously could not be used to learn the Summon Quasit spell, but instead was a one-time use. But now, you can actually learn it. Now, unfortunately, this Quasit in Act 3 isn't as cheeky as the one in Act 1, so there's no dialogue to be had with it, and frankly, it's a bit weak for Act 3, but it does help a lot with escaping from that peculiar lamp. And number 10 is increased difficulty. Patch 4 has added two animated armors to the combat with Bernard in the Arcane Tower on Tactician difficulty, supposedly. However, these are actually present in all difficulty modes I've found. Not only that, but Cazador can now turn into a swarm of bats and move around faster, which is also on all difficulty modes, which makes him immune from being pushed off of the edge and dying. So, there are difficulty changes that affect all game modes. However, there were several changes in patch 4 that specifically increased the difficulty for players on tactician difficulty too. Cazador will have legendary resistance on tactician difficulty, which gives a plus 10 bonus to saving throws. Also in Act 3, within the Durinbald Mausoleum, Houndmaster Paul and his dogs now have the Hunter's Camouflage feature, which after taking damage, they immediately use their reaction to blur, giving attackers disadvantage on attack rolls. Houndmaster Paul also has alert, granting plus five to initiative, can't be surprised, and the ghost dogs all have evasion, lets them dodge out of the way of certain spells, and if a spell or effect would deal half damage on a successful dexterity saving throw, instead it deals no damage instead, and only half if you fail. So a spell like Sacred Flame, for example, would not be great against these ghost dogs. And while you could miss these NPCs in your playthrough of Baldur's Gate, you might want to check out the Durinbald Mausoleum, because in one of the sarcophaguses is the super cute owlbear toy. Patch 4 also increased the damage and spell DC of Roland and Larokin's Firestorm, as well as made several changes to the Orin boss fight, making Unstoppable now stack up to 12 times instead of 10, making Blood Skeleton stronger and have more HP, and increasing the dexterity of Orin Slayer form by 4, and removing the plus 2 AC it granted. Now overall, I don't think all of these difficulty changes would realistically make Tactician harder uh, to go through the entire playthrough, but I think it could be potentially foreshadowing more tactician difficulty increases in the future, which I think would be really cool. All right, number 11 is Scratch's ball will now be harder to lose. So if you lose his ball, you can actually go talk to him at camp and he's gonna give you a new copy of it. So if you ever sell it by accident, just by interacting with Scratch at camp, you can get a new ball. And it's actually important because it's what you use to summon Scratch when you're outside of camp. So it's actually an important item to have on your character. And number 12 is Infernal Iron. When looking for Infernal Iron for Karlak, it will now appear on the map as a broader area marker. So once you talk to Damon about Karlak, you'll now see infernal markers on the map and mini-map like quest markers. This will certainly make it much easier to find infernal iron throughout your adventures, especially since most of the time it's kind of tucked away in the corner, hidden, and so this is going to give you a nice clear marker indicating where you can find it. And number 13 is Artillery Strike. There is a button on the balcony of Ramazith's tower that will now correctly fire bolts of flame towards the city below. So in Act 3, Ramazith's tower, about a few floors from the top,
top, has a balcony, and has a weave button. This button is labeled artillery, and when pressed, it appears the tower will use fire breath to now shoot flames at the city down below. Doesn't appear to do anything, but it is very cool to kind of see that happen. It seems like it hits a house down there. And then at number 14, we have bloated corpse. Patch notes say that a bloated corpse was added in an empty grave in the lower city careful. So this corpse is pretty hard to miss. It's glowing green and can be found in an open grave. Clicking it releases a vile poison and the corpse dissolves and it appears that's all it does at the moment. Number 15 is Sweet Stone Features. When you purchase a statue from Boney in the circus, you can now choose to make it look like you in full equipment, in camp clothes, or naked. Pretty sweet that there are now three dialogue options for how you want your statue and of course we all know which option we'll be choosing. And finally at number 16 we've got Look at Those Cheekbones. The statue you can purchase from Boney now casts a unique version of Blast with a custom description and name. Also, the statue itself now has a condition describing how it blesses its owner. So really, it's not Bless anymore, but now it's called Sweet Stone Features as the permanent buff, and the statue has Look at Those Cheekbones, which is granting you that buff. So I think this is a cool way to kind of make the distinction between Bless and Look at Those Cheekbones. Then finally, at 17, we have Gauntlet Yeva now has more things to say after you free her from her pod in the colony. So within the Mind Flayer colony in Act 2, there's an area called the Tadpoling Center. There you can choose to free everyone inside the pods, which also includes freeing living, hostile Mind Flayers that will attack you, but you'll also free Yeva, and you, then you can choose to purge them all, which would kill everyone in the pods. So if you choose to release them, you'll have a fight on your hands, but if you succeed that fight, you'll get access to this new dialogue with Yeva, and personally, it's not much, probably not worth it, but you can learn a bit more about Duke Ravenguard from her. And those are 17 hidden changes made in patch 4 of Baldur's Gate 3. Find anything else odd or interesting since patch 4? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.